Good morning, everyone. Like Sam mentioned earlier, I'm, uh, I'm not a professional speaker. I don't have a report written out in front of me like this. Um, and for those of you who are familiar with me, anytime I come visit you, they say, oh, here's Frank with his presentations again. So I really, when I read, I have to have books with pictures in them. So if you guys can bear with me through this. Um, I'm, uh, as, as mentioned earlier, I'm president of CCC Transportation. Uh, those of you familiar probably know us better as commercial carrier. We've been a, uh, a, a, a truckload transportation carrier in the state of Florida since 1953. Um, we are one of the Southeast's largest truckload transportation providers. So Dr. Bienvenu, uh, <coughs> when he contacted me, inviting me to take part in this summit, um, he wanted me to provide an industry perspective, if you will, on uh, you know, how would, how would uh, CCC as a, as a transportation provider, how, how, what kind of performance metrics could we add to, uh, to the discussion here? And uh, not being high tech, not being in the research uh, uh, industry, really I looked at it on a, from a practical standpoint and, and really to use the idiom where the rubber meets the road. And I hate to say it, but we say that all the time in our company. Um, now, where can I probably most provide any kind of input um, in this discussion? For me, I see it as in the uh, pavement vehicle, the pavement, the pavement vehicle interaction, or the PVI. Again, literally where the rubber hits the road. Uh, how can PVI impact truckload transportation? What, you know, just put it in some practical uh, numbers, practical uh, review. I see it impacting um, CCC and truckload carriers in a couple of areas. The first one being safety. Now, Mr. Lurigatos, I appreciate his comments because I hadn't heard safety. I'd heard it mentioned once or twice, but I hadn't heard it mentioned a lot today. So for us, safety would be one of the, the paramount things to look at. The next one would be cost. How does the PVI enter, enter, uh, uh, impact uh, my, tr my costs? First one would be in risk. Obviously, the safer a carrier we are, the lower our cost of risk are, and, and the converse would also be true. And then the other area would be in fuel consumption. So I'll just touch base on a, on a couple of those. First one is, is safety. Uh, it is the number one concern, and ensuring the safe operations for our employees and for the general uh, uh, motoring public is the core, is the basic tenet of any truckload transportation carrier. We have to provide safe operations. And to put it in perspective, uh, commercial tractor tra trailer vehicles travel approximately 176 billion miles every year in the, st in the United States. So there's obviously a high density of truckload traffic out there. And to put it in another perspective, I just kind of wanted to throw up there, a typical gross vehicle weight for a tractor trailer combination under load is about 80,000 pounds, about 40 tons. And when you compare that with an average passenger vehicle at 4,000 pounds, there's a 20-fold difference between those two. And anybody with their basic understanding of physics knows when you have two objects coming into collision with one another, the smaller vehicle is going to take the brunt of that. Uh, probably the most unfortunate part of my job is receiving that, that phone call, whatever time of day or night it is, about one of our vehicles being in an accident where there was a fatality. And that happens. So um, anything that we can do to, to ensure safe operations, we have to do it. Now, the truckload transportation industry is a highly regulated industry, as, neat as it should be, because we have to ensure the, motoring, the safety of the motoring public. And the, one of the more recent initiatives out there is uh, CSA 2010, for those of you familiar with it. And the CSA 2010, among other things, ha uh, uses a, 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 a scoring technique of looking at seven basic measurements. And, and what those measurements are doing are, are they're really measuring a carrier's behavioral patterns as they, relate, as they relate or can lead to crashes. You know, they'll include things like dr unsafe driving, hours of service, fitness, things like this. But they all are directed toward behaviorals that can lead to accidents. Or to put it another way, how do we avoid these accidents? Now, how does that impact PVI? Um, well, what we want to do is we, we want to avoid these collisions, okay? So in the unfortunate incident where there is a crash that takes place, 
uh, a lot of times cra uh, crash scene investigators will want to know, well, how fast was the, was the car or vehicle traveling uh, that created this crash? Um, and they, there is a calculation to do that. Now, you could look at it from the other direction is how far will what's called the skid to stop distance be for vehicles traveling at certain rates of speed? And you can see the formula. Uh, the distance is, is, a, is a factor of the, the uh, vehicle speed divided by a couple of different factors. One of those is what's known as the drag factor. Okay? The drag factor is a, a function of the weight of the vehicle and the uh, uh, conditions of the pavement you're, you're working with or you're driving on. Have to do with uh, coefficients of friction among some other things. Now, what I've, what I've shown here, listed here, are a couple of drag factors for different materials of construction for pavements. And you can see that for asphalt and concrete, concrete has, in all conditions, a higher drag factor than asphalt does. Now, the drag, whoops, the drag factor is in the denominator, so basic math says that the higher the drag factor in the denominator, the lower the skid distance is going to be. So putting it in some relative terms, I've charted a couple of different velocities here, and just at looking at the worst case scenario, because it helps my point, uh, at 60 miles per hour, uh, driving on an asphalt surface, the skid stop distance is 171 feet. Conversely, that same ve vehicle traveling on concrete, the skid stop distance would be about 146 feet. So you've got a difference there of about 25 feet, or to put it in perspective, about one and a half car lengths. Now, for a tractor trailer, that distance is even greater because of one of the things I didn't talk about was the braking efficiency. The braking efficiency for a tractor trailer will not be as high as for a, an automobile, so the distance is even greater. So crash avoidance, what we're trying to achieve here, can certainly uh, have an impact by the type of pavement structure you're traveling on. And it could mean the difference between